Opal Tower residents are still in temporary accommodation. Let's have a look. Good evening everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd talk about Opal Tower residents still in temporary accommodation. If you're not familiar with this, Opal Tower is a you know, large high-rise building, residential accommodation down in Sydney and in Christmas last year, Christmas Eve, there was la structural damage to the building so they had to evacuate it and the residents are now, what, it's June, still not home. Some of them are still not home. Let's have a look at this. So this is an article from the Weekend Australian just this morning. So Opal Tower residents remain in temporary accommodation. So five months ago, Shady Eskander's short-term plans involved watching the New Year's fireworks from his new apartment on the top floor of Opal Tower in Sydney, Sydney's Olympic Park. Long-term, he and his wife Amy hoped to start a family, but plans were upended on Christmas Eve when major cracks found on the 10th floor of the 165-metre skyscraper forced an emergency evacuation, along with hundreds of residents. He's been in limbo ever since. Now, I've looked at this. You can see here I've got... I've done a video on the report into the investigation of Opal Tower. I've looked at all the details and issues that, you know, come up with it. I've done about 20 videos on this tower. Being an architect, I'm quite concerned about it. And I'll, I'll link to those, uh, to that playlist there, and to the one about the investigation if you're interested. So, many of us planned for kids this year, the 28-year-old businessman said. We thought this would be a great place to raise our family, but now can I have a newborn in this building? It's difficult at this stage to have an answer to that. Well, you probably could. You probably could. I'm concerned that with regards to this whole, um, the issue of, of Opal Tower and consumer protection, because you've got a whole lot of people that have bought into this tower expecting a certain level of quality, particularly from a developer, and we've seen that there's just been issues and issues and issues. I mean, it's, it's concerning, and it's something that we need to be aware of, and we need to discuss. Hundreds of residents in, remain in temporary accommodation as nearly half, half, wow, of Opal Tower's 392 luxury apartments are still not fit for reoccupation. An expert report commissioned by the New South Wales government found a number of design and construction issues, including non-compliance with national construction codes and standards, had caused major damage to a number of levels. But it stopped short of assigning blame to the developer Eco or builder Icon. Yeah, well, you know, there's a whole lot. Of, it's a complex issue, and a lot of pushing the buck. They pushed it. The, when you, when I was looking at it, they were pushing it on the certifier, then they were pushing it on the well, the reporters were pushing it everywhere. Then onto the engineer. Then the engineer responded that they had done their, their due diligence, but it wasn't built properly. It's to do with uh, some reinforcing. Recommend remediation work have begun and are expected to take at least 10 week, weeks. Mr. Eskander, the tower's body corporate chairman, is back living in his apartment, but he said even the cracks and groans of routine settling have been uh, beleaguering residents and jitters. Oh, yes. People at night sleep, hear a bit of cracking. It's not structural concrete cracking, but because of the event, they get anxious. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. You have to feel sorry for these people. He said some people would say, no way I would spend a night in that building, but some of us don't have a choice. You can't just get a refund. Yeah, because the prices, well, demand for property in the, in the tower has, has dropped. Understandably, it's gotten a bad reputation. And there are a lot of problems in the construction industry. And here, there was a report done, uh, the Sher Shergold Weir Report, and I did a video on that uh, a while ago, and I'll link to that here. And this is a report where, essentially, I did about an eight-part series, where they went through all of the issues in our construction industry, and there are a lot there. There are a lot there. There's differences with regards to legislation and licensing requirements in different states, and a lot of it is you know, who's taking the risk, who isn't. And there were recommendations in this report, which still haven't been implemented, which hadn't been implemented when Opal was built. And, you know, it just screams lack of confidence. I, I definitely have in the industry. You know, I definitely have too. So last year's benchmark Shergold Weir report. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, see, I planned all this. 
perfect crossover, outlined significant and concerning problems with the residential construction industry across Australia and made 24 recommendations to lift standards. In February, February, the New South Wales government announced a regulatory overhaul of the state's construction sector, but Minister for Better Regulation and Innovation, I, I, I hate that title, Better Regulation and Innovation. Now, wouldn't I would say regulation is kind of the antithesis to innovation, but that's just my opinion. Uh, he has yet to con commit to a timeline, and the government appears to be moving slowly on implementing some reforms. Yes, yes it is. We want homeowners to have confidence in the building and construction industry, which is why we will make sure to get these reforms right, Mr. Anderson told The Australian. The report recommended a window of three years to implement the recommendations, and New South Wales is on track to deliver within the time frame. The New South Wales government is taking these reforms very seriously. We are in consultation with stakeholders in the building and construction industry to ensure these reforms deliver outcomes they set out. Mr. Anderson said the New South Wales government has committed to appointing a building commissioner to assist the implementations. So that is concerning. It didn't appear there. There we go. You can see it now. That's concerning that uh, it's taken so many years for them to implement it when I, I would recommend you know you go through go through the, the the report here or at least my videos it's long it's a long series I'll, and or the executive summary I'll link to this one here and I mean there's there's a mishmash of stuff in different states there is definitely a mishmash of stuff in different states I know in Queensland uh, for structural engineers they need to have certain licensing requirements and you can depend on that hopefully to have a certain level of quality but they in new south wales you don't but then again the engineers that worked on the new south wales project had the licensing requirements in queensland but whatever the engineer does is kind of irrelevant if it's ignored on site or if the subcontractor building the precast places the reinforcing in an incorrect way so which is one of the things that happened on opal it was put in upside down so let's have a look at one more thing so this is inside the opal tower so this is um from their social media group inside the opal tower debacle uh, no one heard the first one soft and low like an eggshell cracking but then came the bang so this is another one from the weekend australia so the ancient greeks believed opal came from the tears of zeus well opals come from mint to be but that's a whole other topic, a whole other topic. And I've got a video on that too. Just have a look. Um, when opals turn to tears again, it will bring down Australia's booming high-rise apartment business. Probably, probably. No one heard the first one, soft and low, like an edge cracking. By early afternoon, the splintering in the wall on the city-facing side had escalated to an erratic tick, 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 louder and growing more intense. It was Christmas Eve, and the residents of Opal Tower were busy caught up in the bustle and thrill of festive preparations. Presents to wrap, fridges to stock. This was to be their first Christmas in the sleek new 36-story building, considered a jewel in the residential crown of Western Sydney's Olympic Park, the event's precinct being developed as a dynamic, family-friendly lifestyle hub. The $165 million high-rise had opened four months previously. Many of those in the 392 luxury apartments had only just finished unpacking. Then came the bang. The fissure on the 10th floor was only millimeters wide, but with the weight of thousands of tons of concrete, steel, glass, and human be uh, humans bearing down on it, the sound it made as it bu burst was, according to one upper-floor resident, like a cannon, go cannon going off. Yeah, that, that's well written. And it creates an evocative image, doesn't it? At first they thought bomb. That's kind of a sign of where where the world is today, isn't it? Police were called at 2.45 p.m. and an alarm sounded throughout the building. Shrill and urgent warning the 300 or so residents who were home at the time to evacuate. Emergency services had found a large crack along an inner concrete support wall and the entire building had shifted slightly, leaving doors jammed shut and people trapped inside. That's when the word collapse was first used, says Shady. Yes, well, I mean, that would be terrifying in a tower like this. I, I've, 
I mean, I live in a 100-year-old Queenslander. Whenever it rains, our doors don't open or close because <laughs> of the, the soil we're on. But it's a little different. I can always climb out a window or break through the door. Soon firefighters and public works engineers in high-vis jackets were swarming the building and the forecourt was a chaos of barriers and orange traffic cones. Surveyors, tripod and milling people. They moved us 100 meters away, then 200 away, then way out over the concrete bridge and into the park on the other side of the road, says Laurie Smith, who had moved into Opal Tower with his new wife, Kathy, and their two dogs only three days before. Wow. Tina Tong, who shares an upper floor apartment with five people. <laughs> Is that, I mean, uh, Tina Tong, who shares an upper floor apartment with five people. That's just so stereotypical, uh, you know, including her two-year-old son, recalls seeing carers from a nearby child care center rolling cot uh, out the door and over the footbridge, three or four babies to a cot, an elderly man fresh from back surgery struggling along on crutches. Eventually, an exclusion zone with a radius of one kilometer was established around the stricken building, forcing another 3,000 people out. Roads and nearby train stations were closed, water and gas services shut off, and the tower was isolated from the power grid. That night, the TV news images went around the world. Rivers of people wheeling suitcases and clutching pillows, walking away from their homes and into an unknowable future. Some were lugging cat carriers. Others had grabbed an ad hoc assortment of plastic bags and house plants. House plants? Why would you take your house plant away from from a apartment building? I, 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 that, that's, that makes me sad that someone loves their house plant that much. Is it just me? Let me know in the comments what you would grab if you were evacuating an apartment. What would you take? One kid with a teddy bear looked uh, particularly confused some Christmas Eve. Yes. Uh, it's a, a blustery day, nearly three months after the initial evacuation, when I shared a pizza with uh, Iskander on the ground level of Opal Tower. Christmas had, come, Christmas had come and gone, as had the New Year's Eve fireworks that residents had anticipated watching from their sky-high balconies. Children are black at school. The seasons have changed, and in autumn, a blush colors the mangrove and parklands of the adjacent 40-hectare Bicentennial Park. Incredibly, although the, da although the daily headlines have ceased, nearly half of the tower's apartments are still not fit for reoccupation, and hundreds of people remain in temporary digs. Th this is the issue here. This is the issue. I know a lot of people would argue against any government or state intervention to regulate industries, but we're not talking simple products. We're not talking simple things. We're talking um, investments that can affect people's entire livelihoods. We're talking construction that can kill people. We're talking responsibilities that builders and other parties have to these occupants. And how can we manage that? How can we manage that? I think the public need to be made aware, much more aware. And I think we need to look at ways that we can have uniform regulation across the entire country. Well, here's, here's one thing. Here's a funny thing. If you want to get evidence that of a building is certified and the construction drawings that, it was, that were done, where can you get it? Who will have a record of it? You know, it should be with the building. Maybe you could get it with the builder. Maybe council. I've tried to do that for projects. I've tried to get old records of buildings and they are impossible to find. They're impossible to find often. Maybe, maybe I should start a uh, crypto project where everyone has to lodge it to a crypto chain and then you could download it for a fee. Hmm. Copyright Florian. <laughs> Copyright Florian. But e even that, having access to that information, because uh, I mean, one of the biggest problems here with this, this entire issue is that people purchased off the plan. I bet you, I bet you. Um, after initially being given the all clear to return just after midnight on Christmas Eve, residents were evacuated again days later when the full extent of the damage was discovered. They were told they'd be out for 10 days. That was on December 27th, and the homecoming timeline remained hazy. Some, like Brian Tan, a 32-year-old owner-occupier, living out of a service department in Chatsford with his wife and his mother, have now been off-site longer than they spent in their brand new home. Oh, bugger. That's, that's, I shouldn't be laughing. That's not funny. That's pretty sad. That's pretty sad. I feel safe enough sitting here below 117 meters of high rise, spurked upon 
opening as an architectural marvel. Well, yes, we have a, uh, I will link to the architect's video on this topic. So what happened, which was quite interesting is in the midst of all of this media hype, the architect released this video and I did a, a review of it, which is a design excellence presentation from the Council of Talk Building and Urban Habitat. And it was a fantastic presentation, it really gave me and anyone who watched it an understanding of the architectural implications of the, the building and the design philosophy behind it. But the timing was terrible. I think it would have to have been uh, just pre-programmed. It would have to have been a pre-programmed release. All their social media people at Bates Smart just weren't weren't up to, I, I don't know. I do not know. But I will link to this, this guys, if you want to uh, have a look at it or watch my uh, my review of it. Uh, so yeah, that was that was quite quite interesting. But then after that, they also released a response, and uh, I'll link to that as well. This is their their response from the architectural practice, and I'm familiar with the practice. They do some fantastic work. I know some people who used to work there. Uh, so yeah, they you know they can't be held completely responsible. So yeah, that's something to to have a look at. Oh, there it is. There just you know they go through it and they dis they discuss it. Um, but I, just this timing here, you know, an architectural marvel, and it didn't come out. The timing was terrible, was terrible. So back to this. Stabilization works began almost immediately back in December. With the owners corporation engaging independent engineering firm Cardno as overseer. No fewer than, no fewer than 900 solid steel girders, each a foot wide and weighing 300 kilos, were installed on the first 10 floors and in the basement of the building. Yes. On February 19, three engineer, engineering experts engaged by the New South Wales Department of Planning wound up an eight-week investigation delivering a 36-page report that asserts the building was overall, overall structurally sound. It wasn't about to collapse into a pile of dust and rubble just yet. And you know, this is the report here that I've gone through as well. It's a good read. The report contain disturbing revelations in light of the high density development boom currently sweeping through the nation's capital cities. It found that a number of design and construct construction issues, including non-compliance with national codes and standards, had major damage, it caused major damage to the tower. Some precast walls were constructed of lower standard concrete with under-designed horizontal be support beams called hob beams prone to bursting under extreme pressure. Changes made after the initial design meant some joints between the hob beams and the internal panels had only par been partially grouted, significantly raising the le levels of stress in the building. There were photos too. Uh, mint green plaster crumbling off walls, broken and exposed cracking reinforcement bars bowing under pressure. And um, this here is the secret footage as well that was shown. So the engineers actually responded as well. And I'll link to that video and you can go through their response because the problem with the media is they only give one perspective I and mean, you need to look at all of the different perspectives that they have. Uh, and the engineer was saying, you know, we didn't under design it. We designed it fine. What was built wasn't as per our design. And this can happen with a design and construct issue where the relationships are all quite mixed and muddled. And then as well came out a current affair had the secret footage that we can see we can see here and this is one of my uh, my first live streams where we actually watched the secret footage that was shown where you know disgruntled worker was explaining everything that was going on or what he saw and it just showed essentially shortcuts and cutting corners issues like this happen on construction jobs but it's not doesn't fill you full of confidence and i'll link to that one as well if you want to have a look so you can tell i'm i'm interested in this topic so the findings uh, sent a jolt through New South Wales, $25 billion construction sector and beyond. How were these defects possible? Well, it just shows a lack of understanding of the construction center. This one was an expensive apartment complex with prices starting at $800,000, ranging up to 2.5 million for the dual level penthouse. Well, yeah, again, that, you're not paying for quality, you're paying for marketing. I need a coffee, guys. So, 
if buyers couldn't trust developments at the top end of the market, what could they trust? Probably spec homes, cheap ass, simple spec homes that are built hundreds of times that, you know, as long as the foundation's right, it's fine. Where a tower like this is a one-off work of art in some ways. Urban consolidation is changing our cityscapes at breakneck speed. Opal Towers problems have given plenty of people the jitters. Well, yes, yes, that they have. Urban Task Force Chief Executive Chris Johnson is a former government architect and former executive director at the New South Wales Planning Department who has been tracking the Opal Tower saga closely. He finds it staggering that cracks could appear in a four-month-old building that would have had to pass checks by the Sydney Olympic Park Authority and the New South Wales Department of Planning, as well as obtain sign-off from a structural engineer and a private certifier. Why? Maybe he's just old and isn't familiar with the way the industry is going. Because in a design and construct situation, um, they're working for the builder, the architect's working for the builder, and you know the Special Olympic Parks Authority, they won't step over their bounds. You know These are just planning authorities. They're not going to have any actual capacity to check the structural installation of things. It's, it's going to be beyond their scope. So I'm not really impressed with, uh, with Chris's comments here. To be honest, it shows a lack, and I've seen this a lot actually in the architectural profession, just a lack of understanding of where it's heading. Because you've got all these old fuddy duddies that are thinking back in the old days, where the architect actually was separate from the builder and had responsibility and could, you know, could push that authority onto the builder to make sure certain quality was met. But yeah, doesn't look like it. So the much criticized practice of private certification, a system rolled out nationwide since 1990 to hand private certify, uh, to hand private developer appointed contractors an authority that was once the domain of government or council inspectors has come under fire again in light of Opal Towers woes. Yes, yeah, no, that is true. And in the um, uh, Shergold We report, it can be seen, and I'll bring that one up again. It can be seen the, well, that's one of the issues they highlight is that the local authorities don't actually assess or go out and check the work of the private certifiers, which is part of their responsibility. And that was one thing that was raised in this report. And it's not just in New South Wales, it's throughout the whole country. Johnson, however, however considers Opal's cracking a one-off that no degree of oversight could have caused. What? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We've we've got Lacrosse Tower. Um, I th yeah, I'll, I'll link to my construction playlist. We'll have a look at my construction playlist for a whole other raft of examples about this. Well, yes, oversight could have ha could have caught it if the if the hopefully if the structural engineer was not engaged under the builder, they would have had more authority. The project would have been done maybe a bit slower, and the rear would have been checked. So yeah, no. We've got a first world country and our systems are very tight and our checks and balances figures, he said. Something weird has happened with Opal. Yeah, yeah. Mate, when's the last time you worked in practice? When is the last time you actually worked? What well, urban task force chief? Okay, so he works in government. Maybe the checks on planning are good, but I haven't... Yeah, anyway. Anyway. I wonder if he's ever actually worked in the design and construct role where you've been uh, pretty much... Uh, pushed towards a certain option and then if you refuse you lose all the work that's what happens happened to me happened to me um strip lime green it's sprinkling facade studded with recessed alcoves the triangular tower was designed to catch the eye now it is just attracting ridicule prior to being shut down the developer's website maintain became a magnet for reader comments displaying a distinct brand of uh, gallows humor Jenga Tower. The faulty building was dubbed the Leaning Tower of Homebush. Superb development offering a chance to grow both your capital base and the size of, your, of the property you own. Mine is 2.5 millimeters large <laughs> when, when it was only this morning, <laughs> wrote one joker. There was way more. Cheap apartment perfect for adrenaline junkies. If I rent or buy, there should I make out a will? People who poured their life savings into the building didn't find it funny. Skander tells me one body corporate member had an apartment up for sale for $800,000 prior to Christmas and afterwards she was just getting what? 400000 he said. Then as the saga unfolded, they backed out altogether. 
Andrew uh, Neverly, 59, bought an apartment off the plan. Off the plan. Never buy off the plan, guys. Never buy off the plan. That's insane. Buying off the plan. Okay, for gamers, for gamers here, buying off the plan is pre-purchasing. It is exactly pre-purchasing. This is the exact same thing that is happening in the gaming community. You're pre-purchasing your apartments and you're not sure of what quality you'll get. And sometimes even the developers can put sunset clauses in, get out of your contract and then sell for a higher price to someone else. So yeah, never buy off the plan. That's just insane. So he bought it with his wife five years ago for $840,000. I don't think it's worth anything now, he told 60 Minutes. We're up shit creek. He's, uh, so Iskander said New South Wales Fair Trading told tenants they had legal grounds to break lease, uh, to break their leases as the building was uninhabitable. If you're an owner investor, you've lost your tenant. And when you've lost that rent, how are you going to pay it? Your mortgage, he said. Your whole life starts to unravel. It's very hard to get another tenant. And even the ones that are in there are renegotiating their leases, saying, I'll pay 40%, take it or leave it. Well, yeah, that's how it is. Some tenants may even be profiting from the disaster. Several landlords claim tenants who have stopped paying rent are still accepting a temporary accommodation allowance paid by the builder Icon. Weekly rent in the tower ranges from $500 to $700. Icon, which is understood to have full liability insurance for the project, has been funding the accommodation costs of displaced residents with allocations between $220 and $500 a day, plus expenses, depending on the size of the apartment. Estimated costs so far at least $10 million. Wow. Wow. Those hovering for a scapegoat would have been disappointed with the Government Commission investigation team's report, which stopped short of pinning blame on anyone not icon a reputable a company backed by multi-billion dollar japanese firm kajimi corporation um no we didn't make a mistake no this wasn't a rush job not the design and construction en engineers wsp who australian ceo guy templeton had stood next to um doyle and insisted there was never any risk of the building collapsing not any of the subcontractors involved well no wasn't the rio put him incorrect Isn't that a sub's job? Who's what, who's the foreman supervising on site? Where's the evidence that this was checked? Well, the thing is, okay, she's making a claim here, but the report did, didn't go in. Well, the report couldn't go into a forensic level of detail, did it? Nor McKenzie Group, the private certifiers who had final sign-off, and not Opal's Australia-based developer Ecove, which has four other towers in the Olympic precinct, including a 38-story boomerang tower under construction a block away. Ecove director... Bassam Aflac has called the cracking a rare case of structural defect. No, it's bad construction. And continues to maintain the building is of high quality. Ecove and Icon declined to comment on the story. Nevertheless, the debacle has led to waves of recrimination and further dent of public confidence in Australia's construction industry. According to last year's benchmark Sher Shergold we report, the faith was already much shaken. And with good reason. The damning report by University of Sydney's um, by Western Sydney University Chancellor Professor Peter Shergold and lawyer Bronwyn Weir outlined significant and concerning problems with compliance and enforcement systems across Australia. Okay. Well, that's concerning. Those involved in high-rise construction have been left largely to their own devices. <laughs> yes, the report states. Yes, that that's true. That's true. People will be shocked. People would be shocked. A 2012 study by researchers from UNSW's City Futures Research Centre surveyed more than 1,000 New South Wales strata owners and found 72%, 85% in buildings built since 2000, knew of at least one significant defect in their complex with leaks and lack of fire safety most common. Mm -hmm. Dramatic, alarming and impossible to ignore the cracking in Opal Tower along with recent disasters such as cladding fueled fires in Melbourne's Melbourne's lacrosse and neo 200 apartments have s highlighted a significant systematic problem successive parliaments throughout the country have focused more on procurement of housing stock than on how it's being constructed and the safety of people within them says stephen goddard strata solicitor and spokesman for advocacy advocacy group owners corporation network of australia problems in the industry he says can be traced back to the deregulation in the late 1990s the last 20 years you've had more consumer protection 
purchasing a fridge than a million dollar apartment. Yes, he makes a very good point. What sort of stupid breed of people are we that we could live like this? That it takes something like Opal for people to suddenly take notice. Well, we're not very stupid people. This is very common. Now, my wife Rachel did a thesis on this topic. And um, hang on, I'll look it up. Where there's smoke, there is fire. Rachel was on Radio National. Where she discussed her thesis. Oh, sorry, background, background briefing. And I'll bring it up here for you all to see. Where there's smoke. And uh, Rachel's thesis is available here. Towering Inferno, the regulation of fire safety and its impact on the design of tall buildings by Rachel Heiser. And she was Clarkson when she wrote it. So you can get a copy of her thesis there. Now, it's a thesis for architectural studies. So it's not the most exciting thing to read. Sorry, Rachel. But it is something that... Um, that has a very good section on the history of fire legislation. And we'll just jump here. Uh, and you can see here, this is an example in New York where they have different type of fire escape buildings or fire escape systems. Uh, and she goes here, you know, different inventions. But what Rachel found was whenever there was an issue with, you know, a disaster or a problem, and she analyzed a whole lot of high rise towers in, in New York, uh, sorry, in Hong Kong, we happened to go there for a holiday. We brought a thousand dollars worth of plans back for Rachel's thesis. I spent a whole, like a couple of days going through the planning department in Hong Kong to get all this information. But she found that historically there would be a major disaster. And then because of that disaster, legislation would change over and over again. So I'll link to this in the description below. If anyone is interested in seeing it and uh, hearing uh, Rachel's discussion on the matter. But yes, we'll get back to the article. So his claims that people are stupid, I think it's a bit short-sighted. Uh, you need to, need to learn history because otherwise we'll repeat it and we are once again. The New South, Go New South Wales government finally addressed the sure gold wheel recommendations in February by announcing a regulatory overhaul of the state's construction sector. So yeah, we've, we've, we've looked at that before. Um, so Iskander has too much on his plate close to home to worry about the state of the nation's large-scale apartment block industry. He's 28 with a close... Okay, they're talking about him. So it's getting a bit touchy-feely here in the article. I think that's enough to get an understanding of it. And we'll just finish here. Uh, can he ever feel completely safe? Also difficult to answer. I guess each person has to weigh that up, he says. If you can't get out, do you sell it, take a loss, and hope that you get compensation later? Do you want it out? He suddenly looks very tired. People shouldn't have to go through this. You don't buy your home and then it becomes a headache in your life. Something that has all the question marks over it. So yeah, guys, I think this is, this is quite a sad topic. And the fact that these people are still, you know, are still, you know, half the people, this, well, they were still empty when I looked at it uh, months ago in April. And it's still empty now half the people. So guys, you know, let me know what you think. What do you think about the whole Opal saga? It's a bit um, concerning. It's a bit sad. But yeah, please, I'll keep you updated on this. It's interesting to follow. Have a look at the uh, the Sherwood Gold Report. I think it shows you just some of the issues in this industry and never, ever, ever buy off the plan. Don't pre-purchase your apartments. Anyway, take care guys. Like, share and subscribe. Ding the bell to see my daily updates and I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye for now.